Jan Bjornsson is the editor of The Grapevine, the English language newspaper here in Iceland. And we're sharing coffee and chatting a little bit um, about Iceland. The cover of The Grapevine, at least this last issue, was Whose Fish Are They Anyway? Why don't we talk a little bit about what, what is, I guess, one of the, the biggest consistently um, hot button issues here in Iceland, which is fishing rights and the fishing industry. And what did you take away from kind of the, the research the paper did for that article? And where do you think things are right now? Well, this has been a heavily debated issue for well over 20 years now. And I think everybody has more or less come to the conclusion that the system that we're employing right now is unfair to some point. But uh, it would be very, very hard and even, even uh, more unfair to start to change it now. So it's sort of, we have this devil on our back that we sort of just need to carry around by now. And I, the devil is a quota system that quota benefits system. Re Reykjavik more or less and is depleting the smaller villages where you grew up. Well, it doesn't, it's not an accurate assumption to say that it benefits Reykjavik uh, in as much as it, the, uh, the key element of the quota system was to run the whole system or the whole industry in a more efficient manner. So that was sort of the, the goal. It was actually a byproduct. The, the, the f main goal was to sort of protect the fish stock. Right. The fish, fish were being depleted, and then yeah. in 83, 84, they decided they needed to cap the number of fish caught. And then once they had done that, they had to figure out how they were going to divvy those fish up. And that's yeah. when the quota system came about. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and the sort of byproduct of that was uh, that, you know, companies started merging and uh, the fishing quota became uh, sellable. Most of the big boats bought up all the fish quota. So the uh, quota sort of gathered on very few hands and the company started merging. The fish factories in the smaller towns started closing and, and all, the, all the production was moved to bigger towns and bigger companies and more efficient uh, fish plants. So the efficiency of the, of the system is what is causing small rural, rural Icelandic towns to, to go under because there's nothing left. Everything's moving to a more bigger and more economically viable uh, locations. So does this mean that Reykjavik could become like almost a, a city state and the villages get dried up? In a way it does. I mean uh, you're here, you grew up. I grew up in a small fishing town called Seyðsjörður on the east side of Iceland, which is a a fairly normal fishing village, and uh, most of the most of the people I went to school with are living in Reykjavik. So the thing is, when, you know, when there's no work left, to all the fish is gone somewhere else. There's not much else to do there. Yeah. And then people move to Reykjavik. You know, there's jobs and there's opportunities, and and so uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's a. Uh, there's nothing left, you have nothing, nothing to stay for. Iceland's not part of the EU. What's the debate on that? Usually when people talk about it, they say, well, they can't be part of the EU because they'll lose some of the fishing rights that they've enjoyed since the end of the Cod Wars some 30 years ago. Yeah, that's been the main argument. Sort of, uh, I guess, the only argument that has sort of made any connection with Icelanders. is that uh, Iceland is a newly independent nation. We uh, received independence in 1944. And I guess uh, people sort of clench on to that ideal of independence and they don't want to release or, or, or relinquish independence into the, into the hands of the people in Brussels. When you search at least English language newspapers for stories about Iceland, you don't find that many. But one I, one topic I did find quite a few stories on was whaling, mm. which at least the rest of the world thinks is a big deal. I don't know how big a deal it is here, but for the last few years, Iceland's resumed whaling, mainly under the, um, the guise of scientific research. Norway's done it, Japan's done it as well. What's the temperature here? Are people pro-whaling, split, ambivalent? The thing with whaling is that I think most Icelanders feel 
that the Icelandic people should have the right to whale or hunt whales. And I think most people feel that this outside influence, Greenpeace and other natural organizations, nature organizations, environmental organizations, are sort of uh, sticking their nose somewhere where it doesn't belong. This would be our right to sort of decide for ourselves. But at the same time, there is nothing economically viable about whaling at the moment. When the international uh, environmental organizations started focusing on Iceland, it sort of brings a lot of negative publicity to the country. Yeah. And I think most people recognize this, this is so not worth it. At the same time, I still think that most people feel that we should have the right to, to decide this for ourselves without outside interference. It goes back to the same issue you were saying about the EU, this idea of yeah, independence, of, self-determination. Exactly. And I think most Icelanders feel that way, that it should be, you know, an independent country. We, you know, we finally got rid of the Danes after like 600 years. And now we just like to, <laughs> just want to rule ourselves. Yeah. So uh, this globalization thing came at the worst time for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> what else? I don't know, you mentioned music scene. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, that's right, of course, of course. Unfortunately, I haven't been out to a show. I, I mean, I know almost nothing about the, the Icelandic music scene, except that I'm told everyone's in a band, or two bands, or is an artist. I guess, why is that? Well, <clears throat> that's an overstatement. Right, <laughs> yeah, right, as these things always are. Perhaps add that one of the things that I've sort of my editorial position at, at the Grapevine. Uh, my position has always been to sort of counter, counter the sort of cliches okay. that, are, that are running around about Iceland. So you read a travel brochure and, and it will state that 90% of the Icelandic nation believes in elves or ghosts. Oh yeah, that's another popular one, yeah. yeah and then, you know, it's, I don't know anybody who believes in elves. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one person. <laughs> it's kind of off on many, many other things as well. So, you know, and, and people come to Iceland filled with this notion of this magical dream world where, you know, men walk amongst elves and, and <laughs> you know, and everybody's an artist and everybody writes poetry. And, right, right. And, uh, it's not true. <laughs> just tell you right off but uh <clears throat> well I'll say this I know I think I know one I have one friend who maybe is in a band hmm. how many friends do you have who are in music I'm 15 I guess 15 <laughs> so <laughs> enough said it's not everyone no, but, but it's uh, a lot yeah yeah well obviously there's a uh, there's a lot of people a lot of people playing music yeah. some of them claim to be playing it with elves and <laughs> I don't know. For whatever reason, I don't think I had it through my head, and maybe I probably still don't, but I think I have a better idea now, the importance of Bjork mm. to, to Iceland and the people here. Yeah, but I think she's sort of responsible for this thing that I'm talking about as well. Okay, so we blame Bjork. I was going to say <laughs> quietly, I don't want to get us in trouble. <laughs> what exactly do you blame her for? Uh, I don't so much blame her maybe, but she sort of uh, did her part in, in sort of playing up that aspect. So sort of, for, for a while she talked a lot about elves <laughs> and nature and being out in nature with elves. And I think a lot of people got, got the cue from her sort of, yeah. And then you had this sort of movement of people who play music and, and, and talk to elves. <laughs> sort of transgressed into something much bigger than than, uh, than the I don't know the joke that it originally was or, or whatever it was thought of to be. But uh -huh. now it's become this sort of cliche that everybody wants to come to Iceland and and, and, and listen to Sigurds play amongst the elves or, or yeah. something similar. It's, uh, to me, it's very tiresome. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 